Hey, what's up everyone? Alex here. I'm typically not in the market for looking for the most innovative games out there because I'm of the belief that a game just needs to be fun in order for anybody to enjoy it. Doesn't that make sense? A fun game, enjoy it, you know what I mean. But there are a few times when I encounter a game that has something special going for it that I just can't help but share my experiences with it. Today's game is going to be Affogato, which in Italian is a coffee-based dessert. Now, I don't know how many of you guys know me, but I don't typically drink a lot of coffee, but I am a fan of games like Coffee Talk and Valhalla that blend creating coffee with visual novel aesthetics and creating this really unique experience that turns out to be very memorable thanks to its narrative and colorful characters. That said, Avogado is very early in its development, it seems, but there's a lot of really good ideas here that I just want to talk about and share. But before anything else, this video is sponsored by Spiral Up, the publishers of Avogado, and I just want to take the time to thank them for this opportunity to play this demo. That said, you can play the Avogado demo right now as part of Steam Next Fest. In Avogado, you play as Avogado. The big joke around Afogato is that a lot of people tell her that she has red hair, so she always has to correct them and let them know that it's actually magenta. And this gag kind of keeps going throughout the entirety of the demo. But okay, names aside, Afogato mixes that coffee-making gameplay that I mentioned from Coffee Talk and Valhalla with a very heavy visual novel-style storytelling presentation. But it goes even one further, because Avogado is actually a witch who can actually go into people's mind labyrinths in order to perform exorcisms on people who have been possessed by demons. We're going to go over all three of these gameplay modes in this video, but I want to talk about the storytelling and the character development first. As mentioned, Afogato's storytelling presentation revolves around a visual novel aesthetic. And for me, what I want from a story told in a visual novel style is to have its prose be extremely good. We're talking like dialogue that is very colorful. You get a vibe of like who these characters are. And to put it in another way, these pieces of dialogue should be so good that if I'm just reading that text, I should be able to identify who the heck is talking. Now, I know that that's setting a really high bar here, but I want to be fair to the developers and let them know that I think what they have in Afogato are bits and pieces of greatness. Like, I think that the gag for Afogato having magenta hair as opposed to red could be a really good joke. But the way that it's presented in Afogato right now, it kind of loses its luster very quickly after the first hour of the demo. Not to mention, there are some really weird things that happen in the story. Like there's this doctor that you meet and he just kind of outright calls you like, hello, beautiful. And I'm like, dude, you're my landlord and you're a doctor. That is such a weird combination of jobs, man. It makes you want to smack him. And maybe that's the intention, but I'm not quite sure that that's really the kind of reaction that the writer wants us to have when meeting these characters, you know? Throughout playing the demo, you're going to encounter these weird bits of dialogue that definitely feel like they're written by somebody who's not an English native speaker. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But remember that this is a visual novel, right? The writing has to be impeccable. And if the dialogue goes on for minutes on end, it has to propel you forward, especially if the visuals are just going to remain static throughout. And of course, what visual novel wouldn't be complete without a way to automatically scroll text. This function isn't particularly tuned yet to the dialogue that's available. And the more I played with the game, the more I noticed that auto just completely stopped working, which is yet another reason why I think that this is a very early build of the game. Dialogue aside, I found that the coffee making is pretty interesting to play. It's much like Coffee Talk or Valhalla where they have like a recipe book that you can easily access. And of course, all the tools that you may have, including all the ingredients. I am kind of curious to see if actually serving different beverages to people will deviate the storytelling from one path to another. Though if I have any sort of thing that I'd like to improve is its presentation and maybe making a lot of the mouse hotspots a bit bigger so it's a lot easier to navigate. 
That said, the game is using lower resolution assets that I feel could be improved. I do think that for the most part, there are some really cool ideas that Afogata has. I do think that maybe its appearance needs to match the ambition of what it's delivering. Because while I think that the Steam cover for the game is really attractive, I do find that the in-game presentation leaves something to be desired. Like, I'd love this to be this really incredible looking game that leaves an impression on me, but right now it's not really hitting the mark for me. One thing that is interesting about Afogato in terms of its gameplay is that each day actually kind of moves in a very Persona fashion, down to how the days are divided into mornings, afternoons, and evenings. It's when your coffee shop closes, when you start taking these exorcism jobs and jumping into people's mind labyrinths so that you can exorcise them from demons. This by far is probably the most interesting part of Afogato to me because it plays like a reverse tower defense game. Now in typical tower defense, you're responsible for putting down turrets or characters or whatever that kind of defeat the oncoming enemies. But in this particular case, you are those incoming enemies, and these towers are things that you have to defeat as you're going through the map. Now, it's not done in such a simple manner, though, because you have a currency called Penta that you can build up as you go through the map. You can control where your characters go by means of waypoints, where you can control the flow of your characters. But outside of that, the characters automatically activate their abilities, attack nearby enemies, or die in a lot of cases. Like this takes a bit of getting used to. The first real map that I played in the game, I actually died quite a bit, but it's only until later on that I kind of accepted the fact that, yeah, I'm probably gonna die because that's part of the tutorial. And I think people who strive not to die in games might find that a bit annoying, but it's the game trying to teach you some of its mechanics and saying like, it's okay to fail sometimes. So your mileage may vary on how you react to that. So the way that you pick out your troops is gonna be based off of the amount of Penta that you have and what cards you have on your hand. Now, you're typically gonna start with an attacker and a healer and a shield person, and they all have different costs. The enemies that actually have a penta symbol on top of their heads will yield you some penta. But as you're progressing through the map, you'll also pick up cards that you can use to just get tons of penta. What essentially boils down to is figuring out when and where you use these abilities or call on reinforcements. Because if any of your units die, you can call them back out, but they'll cost a lot more. And given that waypoints are the only ways that you can prevent them from moving forward or backward, at least in the demo, things can get pretty hectic and very confusing. Thankfully, you can speed up the game or completely pause it to help make sense of what's going on. And of course, when you're done with battle, you'll be earning some points to be able to upgrade your cards to make them either more resilient to attacks or just deal more damage. Overall, I really think that there's a lot of promise to this reverse tower defense model, especially given how not a lot of JRPGs actually utilize this sort of gameplay. That being said, the learning curve to try to figure out how things work will require a lot of trial and error. So I'm hoping that the final game will actually kind of smooth out this difficulty ramp so that that way it doesn't feel so punishing to people there is an easy, normal, and hard difficulty settings. So if you want a more breezy experience, you can always put the difficulty on easy. One thing that I also noticed with this demo is that it has partial controller support, meaning the controls are there, but not for every single thing, which means you'll still need to have a mouse and keyboard if you wanna access other features. You can even remap these controller configurations. This is only available for the keyboard. So much like what I did with another demo, I basically had to map the mouse and keyboard onto my Steam Deck controls, which is by the way, this is gameplay captured straight from that. I can also tell that there's still a lot of places that could use a bit more music. And despite the gameplay needing additional tuning and the story needing a bit more help, I think what Afogato has here is truly promising, which again lends to the idea that the taste of Afogato that we had is very early. I want to restate the fact that I really enjoyed the reverse tower defense idea, and I think if tuned and done well, it's going to be one of those battle systems that could truly be innovative. I'm not even joking. 
But the thing is with tower defense style games, and of course the reverse, is that it's almost like trying to solve a puzzle. Now you mix in JRPG mechanics with it, and you're kind of throwing a bit more wrenches in there that might overcomplicate something that could potentially be truly valuable. And given that, like, I don't necessarily feel as though the stat building is any sort of substantial, there's still some really difficult battles in there, I think that's something the that developers should consider and take a look into, in addition to the dialogue critiques that I mentioned. But otherwise, I think the idea of running your own coffee shop and then kind of sidelining as a witch that's exercising demons from people via this reverse tower defense gameplay seems very novel. And I want to see this really shine and really be its final form in the best way possible. Because I truly believe in this game. And again, I don't normally look for games that are innovative. And I think that Afogado has something special here and that we are at this interesting crossroads where Afogado can really realize its fullest potential or be possessed by demons in the worst case. At any rate, guys, those are my impressions of Afogado, which is again out now on Steam Next Fest all the way up until February 28th because it's a pretty beefy demo. Have you played Afogado? What are the parts of Afogado that interest you the most? Post your thoughts in the comments below and let's talk about it. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.